most crucial part with uh, the mayor explaining what he knows. Nobody else knew on the city council. I can't we believe it. The city manager, she remembers, the right way, she not to run any people on that other I, I don't know what yeah. right away, she, she was given it, city manager was given it, who they consulted, I can't speak to her. With regard to the close out of the project, your grants, yeah, speak up a little bit, your grants require the close out by a time certain. And I don't recall the deadline, but that was what was pushing the close out, is to get the job done within the time that you had to complete it for utilization of grant money. So that, that was the pressure point. Mayor, I believe Mr. Gardner is going to correspondence in the last day or two from FEMA, and FEMA thinks the project is still open. I can't speak for all Mr. Gardner has. Last question, I'll sit down, Mayor. So did I understand the engineers to say there's no engineering problem here, the girl could go in? and be effective. We just tie into the higher elevation north of the bend. Yes. Well, what about the old red area we're here? Well, may it, it may all spill over at the lot and right up there. there. There's many places that the water can get around. This is just a starting point trying to help the Dunlop problem. And if, if the city wants to go further and looking at other issues like that, they can. And if there's culverts, there's ditches, there's, you know, there are other things where that water's going to find us. It, it was a relatively cost-effective way to help out. It, it was something, it was not a, a key component of the project, it was a, an aspect of the project, but I would not say it was uh, in any way a cornerstone or a fundamental. Well, what was the key part of the project? The pond? The storage in the basin. That's, at the end of the day, when you're designing projects in low-lying areas and you're trying to meet peak runoff, you're looking for storage. So, the pond. The pump storage in the pond and pre-pumping the pond. The, the, the free point in that pond. Your is comments is that the pond was analyzed as a standalone. Do you have any modeling that shows the pan the pond surviving once the canal overtops its banks? No. Indeed, could any modeling be developed that would show that pond working if the canal overtops its banks? Mm, yes. It could. With with further analysis, it could. Do that with a PJ. Further modeling could could uh, could show that you uh, you're able to show how it's overflowing things. Oh, oh okay, but no. Not work. That, 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 there, 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 there are so many different scenarios. Every single time that you run a storm scenario, a modeling scenario, you've got a tail, a variable tail water that changes throughout the event. You've got variable rain conditions and frequency and intensity. Is it, you know, does the hydrograph come up very quick and you have your peak within a very short time period? Is it eight or nine inches between a 12 hour time period? That dramatically increases the intensity of the peak portion of the storm. Is it eight or nine inches over 24 hours? When does your uh, high tide come in? I mean, there's probably an infinite number of scenarios that you can model. At the end of the day, you're stuck with what your site is. You have a site, and the site has a certain size to it. And you have a certain property limitation. Okay, how big can we make the pond? Make the pond as big as you can. How big can the pumps be? Pumps are more basically sized based upon the outfall. There's a 36 inch outfall that was essentially the core of this whole project. That was what limited how much water you could pump out of that site. Was what is your peak velocity in that pipe? That backed up into what is your peak pump station size? And that backs up into how big is the pond. So all of these things are constraints. Now you can model it until the cows come. But essentially, you still have a site, and you still have a canal and an outfall, and you're designing around what you have. But to be clear, you didn't make any effort to model that pond. That, that there is probably 20 or 30 different scenarios that were modeled for that system. And the permitting that was done, and the, the modeling that was done for all of the different scenarios you know, this system has been modeled till the cows come. I've been requesting that as FOIA, so I'm not getting to it. There's just been 20 years modeling. I can give you all the modeling. I would appreciate that if you would, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. But to be clear, you didn't model this pond to a 
account for water from the canal, yes or no? No. Correct. And is that because you had the berm in place at that point and you assumed the canal water would be contained in the canal? That would not have changed the results. The size of the pump station, the size of the pond, and the size of what you had in place is what it is. And regardless of what modeling you put in place to determine, okay, what happens when you know, this goes here or there, it doesn't change the, the fundamental, what you can have. It's, if, if something is a certain size and that's all it can be, we bought all, the city bought all the property that you bought. They bought every square foot and every property in that area that could be purchased to make the pond as big as possible. They, this pumps were sized to the maximum that they could be sized to go through that existing 36-inch conduit that goes all the way out to the intercoastal. So regardless of what the modeling results show, the end result of what you can have, it is what it is. So you didn't, uh, you didn't make any effort to model for water from the canal, and I'm trying to understand I don't, why. I don't understand the question. Okay. I asked if you included the, water from the canal. Yeah, Mayor, you're right. If we're not going to get an answer, no, no, why no, not? Wait a minute. Let me be clear. You've got gates. You put gates in to take some of the water out of the canal. Is that correct? Into the box. There is a couple of gates. You've got a gate that can pull out of it. But you, you do take some water out of the canal. Yes, you can. Okay, that was, and I, that's what you had. It doesn't take that's some water. That's not just for conditions. That's just to augment the retain system. That, that's what that gate is for. It's not used in store conditions. But it allowed you to pump down. Pretty those gates don't affect that when you're pumping okay. down this from the, from the pumps. Let's, let's make it clear. Once the pond overtops its banks, that system is no longer any good, basically. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, oh, there's so much water coming down that canal, and once it overtops its banks, the, that, that's the that's a, that's a time where you say, okay, pump as much as you can, keep pumping until it, it starts receding, it's, until the, the canal goes below its bank. Absolutely. So wouldn't the solution be to somehow keep the water in the canal bank? That's what we attempted. But even with, with the berm. But even with the berm, the berm stops Dunlop. Okay? And then you, once you get past Dunlop, then it becomes very good. You have 4.9s, 4.8s. Now the water is going to go back around Oak Street. Once it gets back around Oak Street, it's going to come back up north. And, I mean, there's a million different ways for that water to seek its own level. So Why regardless of... Why raise the bank? You can't. Because then you're negatively impacting upstream property owners. Back up towards Moonstone. Back up all the way up at Oak Canal. So there's no solution. I'm not saying there's no solution, but what I'm saying is every single time you say it's, it's that easy, why well, you just do this, 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 and there are mitigating circumstances and there are complexities that don't make it just that simple. Mary, you're very tall. You use your three minutes well, then. <laughs> <laughs> 